A new three-part investigation by NJ Advanced Media is raising disturbing questions about the deadly July 5th fire aboard a cargo ship at Port Newark. That's where a vessel loaded with 1,200 used cars bound for Africa burst into flames, killing two Newark firefighters as they worked through dangerous conditions trying to put out the blaze. Well, the cause is still being investigated by the U.S. Coast Guard and the National Transportation Safety Board, and the results could take a year before being made public. But after sifting through court filings, public records, and hours of radio transmissions, investigative reporter Ted Sherman found the port fire was a battle the firefighters never saw coming and one they weren't prepared to fight. Ted joins me now. Well, Ted Sherman, uh, it's a pleasure to get to sit down and talk with you. Tell me just first, after looking through all of these records, did Newark and the fire department have a plan of action when they arrived on scene that night? No, the records that we looked at clearly show that they did not have a clue as to what to do. In fact, we spoke to firefighting experts and and even without the reports that we had, they they said specifically that, that they came onto the site and didn't know what to do next. But then when you go and read through the, the uh, incident reports that we obtained through public records request, it says it all out in, in black and white. In fact, a number of, of uh, captains in their reports specifically said, I've never been trained in shipboard firefighting. I've never been on a cargo ship. And aside from their comments and their written reports after uh, the incident, were there other details that clearly explained that this was a group of firefighters who had never really come up against this? Absolutely. In, in, in the, in the uh, early days after the fire, there was a lot of talk. We, uh, I wrote a story quoting a number of, of uh, union officials about how, the fact, how they could not connect their hoses to the ship's internal standpipe system, which is a, a uh, system to deliver water. You see that in apartment buildings right, sometimes. Right, exactly. Yeah. They said that they were metric thre threads. We have American threads. We couldn't connect. And, and in the, in the um, incident reports, they, they go over that repeatedly. We couldn't connect. We, didn't, we weren't able to connect. It wasn't designed for our hoses. But, but in, in my research, I found out anybody who knows anything about firefighting on a ship knows that there are international adapters that are on every ship and usually on the fire trucks of, of departments that handle port type emergencies. They're, they're called international shore connections. Newark had no idea that those were needed and, and as a result of that the, f the fire was worse than it, it should have been because they were fighting a fire with one inch hoses that are not meant to extinguish big blazes. They weren't able to connect and they didn't know why they, didn't, they weren't able to connect. I'm curious too because that night we learned that initially they arrived on scene. It seemed like things were somewhat stable. The crew members on this cargo ship were accounted for. What happened there and why did firefighters continue going inside the container ship uh, to fight this blaze? Was that unveiled in your investigation? Yeah, there, there was actually no reason for them to go in. Um, when, they, when they first showed up, um, both the incident reports and, and the audio that, that uh, is now available talked about the fact that this was, this was a, a, this, this was a know-nothing fire. It, 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 uh, um, they, there were two, fi two fi cars on the top deck that were on fire. The commanding officer in charge of the response said, we're taking care of this, we don't need mutual aid. He canceled EMS, he canceled other departments. He said, said I just don't think I'm gonna need them. And then one of the, the battalion chiefs decided to go down deeper into the ship to see why there was still smoke coming up from, from a lower deck, because they, that by that point, learned that the fire actually had started on the 10th deck, deck 10, not, not on the top. And he, he went down there. And in speaking with firefighting experts, that's just not the standard operating procedure on a, on, on a ship fire like this. You either, you either use the ship's fire suppression system or you stand back and let it burn out and cool it down until it burns itself out. And, and 
you know, while that might be standard operating procedures for, for, for experienced departments, we find out during our investigation, Newark had no standard operating procedures or guidelines for fighting shipboard fires. And of course, two firefighters were killed. Would it have been different, perhaps a different outcome? I'm just gonna ask it this way. Would those firefighters have been alive today if there was standard operating procedures in place and they were followed? It depends on what the standard operating procedures were, but uh, everyone I've spoken to say that there was no reason for anybody to go down into that, that compartment. And you talked earlier about how things got bad in a hurry. Things got very, very bad in a hurry. They went down there, they thought it was okay Initially, when they went down, there were two two cars on fire on the deck, but you could see in the in the compartment. And then, within the space of minutes, the smoke just started filling up the compartment where nobody could see anything. It was zero visibility, and the only thing that they had, the only breadcrumb trail out of the to the department out of the compartment, was this fire hose. You let go of that, you're disoriented. You you might not ever find your way out. Uh, two firefighters did find their way out and, and two unfortunately perished after, after they lost their way. Ted Sherman with NJ Advanced Media on this uh, three-part series. Ted, thanks so much. Thanks for having me.